for Session Daily Updates, I'm Sarah Allen. The House has been in recess and is expected to reconvene shortly. Let's now send you to the House Chamber. The House will come to order. <laughs> calendar for the day. The first bill on the calendar for today is House File 2718. The clerk will report the bill. House file number 2718, number three on the calendar for the day, an act relating to local government. <clears throat> I recognize the member from Sherburne, Representative Zerwas, to introduce your bill. Mr. Speaker and members, House File 2718 is a bill dealing with the Elk River Municipal Utilities 
uh, to expand their uh, board of directors from a three-member board to a five-member board, which apparently takes us. So we're here for that. The Elk River Municipal Utilities recently uh, went through an acquisition of territory uh, with Conexus Energy, which will grow their service area by about 20%. It's uh, a roughly a, a $50 million operation that's currently managed by three individuals uh, within our community, and they're looking for a little bit more oversight and a move to a five-member board. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House File Number 2718. Third reading. The member from Hennepin, Representative Horkman, discussion on House File 2718. Um, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Speaker. Representative Zeros, I was wondering if you would yield for a question. He will yield, Representative Hortman. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, Representative Zervas. I was wondering if that there is any impact on the electricity rates for the customers of the Elk River utility. Will there be any additional cost added by this additional commissioner? Representative Zervas. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members, the, uh, as the first phase of the Conexus expansion has gone, gone over, the uh, Elk River Municipal Utility expansion in the Conexus area, Elk River Municipal Utilities uh, kept their rates flat uh, for the first year. Uh, these uh, board members do get a per diem, I think that is equivalent to $100 a month, I want to say. So a pretty nominal impact. Representative Hortman. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Zerwas. Well, some of the... Um some of the members of the boards of these utilities make quite a bit of money. I know the members of the board of Conexus actually do quite well. And I imagine that those uh, members of the Elk River utility make significantly less than the board members of Conexus. If you have a rough idea, that'd be helpful if you'd yield for that question. Representative Zerwas will yield. Representative Zerwas. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members, you are correct, Representative Horman. I heard recently that a Conexus board member makes in excess of $50,000 annually, which members kind of makes you wonder what the heck we're doing here. But that's another story, I suppose. Um, the Elk River Municipal Utility uh, Board of Commissioners uh, currently comprise of three board members. One is the mayor of the city of Elk River who gets a meeting stipend. Uh, the other two uh, members of the Elk River Munici Municipal Utility Board also get a monthly meeting stipend. Um, but again, I think their total compensation um, is, is less than two grand a year. Representative Hortman. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Zerwas. I think this is my last question. I'm wondering if the new members would be elected or appointed, and if they're elected over what area. I'm sorry, I don't have your bill in front of me. He will yield. Representative Zerwas. Mr. Speaker and members, the board currently is consisted of three members. One is the mayor, the other two are appointed by the mayor uh, and city council. This expansion would give the city council the opportunity to appoint one more person from the Elk River City Council and one more citizen at large that is a resident of the Elk River Municipal Utility uh, Service Area, which is now the bulk of the city of Elk River, and then a little bit south of the river into Otsego. Representative Hortman. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I have a little bit of a concern about citizen at large members on a board like that, because what that board is deciding is what the electricity rates should be and what your utilities decisions should be. And if they're not accountable to voters in some way, whether as a city council member or by direct election, when you have a citizen at large, that really takes citizens power away but I don't have a big problem with your bill, and thank you for the answers to my questions. Any further discussion on House File 2718? Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill.
The clerk will close the roll. Atkins votes aye. There being 125 ayes and one nay, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for today is House File 3370. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 3370, number seven on the calendar for the day, an act relating to public safety, the first engrossment. I recognize the member from Candy, Ohio, Representative Miller, to introduce the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. This is a uh, public safety bill, more uh, specifically a Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. The agency is uh, supporting my bill, and this relates to predator offender registry. There are, there are two items that are going to be changed with my bill. Number one, uh, it's been the practice of the department to require in writing when someone that's on the predatory offender list to uh, change their address, change of employment, or change of a motor vehicle used. However, there was a case, State versus Munger, last year in which the court found that there's nothing in statute which actually requires the in writing, even though that was the practice. And so that's one thing that my bill will do. It will require that if someone's on the predatory offender list and they change their primary or secondary address, their change in employment or change of vehicle, that it does have to be noted in writing to the people that they report to. The second part of my bill uh, is a little bit closer near and dear to my heart, and what it requires is that in the, in the law at this time, in statute, if there is a predatory offender that's registered and there's a child living in their house, uh, Child Protection Services is not required to be notified. Matter of fact, they cannot be notified that that situation occurs. And it's near and dear to my heart because many years ago, my wife, when she was 13 years old, experienced that same thing. She was abused by her stepdad and um, uh, was pulled out of the house into foster care. He sure served only a very short time of work release jail time. And when she came back into the household, he was there again. And within six months, he was trying to do it again. So what my bill requires is, is in the event that there is a child in the home of someone who's on the predatory offender list, the Child Protection Services is required to be notified. Now they can make the determination whether that child should be in there or not, but at least we're able to bridge that gap. So those are the two things that my bill does, and I ask for your support. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House File number 3370. Third reading. Discussion on House File 3370. Seeing no discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. Clerk will close the roll. Earhart votes aye. There being 127 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for today is House File 2927. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> House file number 2927, number five on the calendar for the day, an act relating to transportation, the first engrossment. I recognize the member from Carver, Representative Nash, the bill author, to introduce your bill. Mr. Speaker, members, this is House file 2927. It is a bill that is supported by MnDOT that will allow um, entities that utilize the blue highway signs for attractions to put out more than one in a location. I have worked very closely with MnDOT. They are supportive of this bill. There is no fiscal note as the people who deploy these signs actually pay for the signs themselves. Very straightforward. I appreciate your help. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File number 2927. Third reading. Discussion on House File 2927.
Seeing no discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. My button isn't working, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to vote aye. Mr. Speaker? My The clerk will close the roll. Moran votes aye. There being 128 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 2777. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> House File Number 2777, Number 4 on the calendar for the day, an act relating to public safety. I recognize the bill author, the member from Hennepin, Representative Hillstrom, to introduce the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Members, this bill is related to exposure of bloodborne or uh, bodily fluids um, in an emergency situation. This bill covers police officers, paramedics, paid or unpaid ambulance personnel, firefighters, good Samaritans, anytime someone comes in contact with bodily fluids in an emergency situation. Currently, there's a procedure in law that allows someone who has had a significant exposure to go to court and ask for testing of the person's blood or... Um Whose blood or bodily fluid was tested 
There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File Number 2777. Third reading. The member from Sherburne, Representative Newberger. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I just want to say a thank you to Representative Hillstrom uh, on behalf of the uh, several um, thousand EMTs and several hundred paramedics uh, in this state. Uh, thank you. Uh, this was a uh, this is a gift to us, uh, and we appreciate you making our jobs more safe. Any further discussion? The member from Wabasha, Representative Draskowski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm wondering if the author would yield for a question. She will yield. Representative Draskowski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Representative Hillstrom, uh, why do we need to have an ex parte hearing here? Why can't the defendant in the matter have an opportunity to come to court and uh, be part of that hearing process? Please explain. Representative Hillstrom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Representative Draskowski, this actually does require that you serve the person and that they have the ability to come to court and be heard and they have the opportunity to have a lawyer as well. Right now, under current law, if the person doesn't come to court, there is no method to make them come to court. And this says if they've been properly served, they've been given the opportunity to be heard, they've been given the opportunity to have a lawyer, and they choose not to come to court, that then the court can still hear it. And then the court would evaluate it based on the same standards. Even if the uh, person doesn't come to court, they would still have to meet the same standards under the statute before ordering the order for the test. Representative Dreskowski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and Representative Hillstrom. Any further discussion on House File 2777? Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. There being 129 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for today is House File 1674. The clerk will report the bill. House file number 1674, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to state government. I recognize the member from Carleton, the bill author, Representative Sundeen, to introduce the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, 1674 deals with the creation and alteration of sanitary districts. Uh, this bill was inspired by the work of some uh, citizens around Sturgeon Lake, uh, which actually uh, touches both uh, Carleton County and Pine County and uh, several different townships and several different municipalities. Uh, this district uh, needs to expand to accommodate uh, the needs for improved sewer systems uh, due to the failing mound systems around the lake. This is a housekeeping bill that was uh, provided by the Office of Administrative, Administrative Hearings. It impacts the office's ability to hold hearings relative to the creation, dissolution, annexation, and detachment of sanitary sewer districts. It does four things. It removes the requirement that notices about Office of Administration hearings, action on sanitary di sewer districts boundaries be published in the state register and replaces it with a requirement that notices shall be published in a newspaper of general circulation in the area of the proposed action. It requires a joint public informational hearing only for contested cases. It allows more flexibility for scheduling public hearings and eliminates several vague references in statute and provides more clarity for the users of the system. And I uh, look for the entire body to support this. And I uh, would like to thank uh, Representative Rarick for his support in this as well. 
There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File Number 1674. Third reading. Discussion on House File 1674. The member from Pine, Representative Rarick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, um, I urge your support. Uh, this came from a need arising from uh, our particular area, um, but many other areas, I'm sure, across the state will be helped by this in the future. Um, and I'd really urge your support. Uh, those of us downstream of Representative Samdeen's area will really appreciate it. Any further discussion on the bill? Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. There being 129 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. Report from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. Pepin from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, pursuant to Rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bill to be placed on the calendar for the day for Thursday, April 28, 2016, and establishes a pre-filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bill. House file number 3467. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there's no objection, we'll take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. Announcements. The member from Brown, Representative Torkelson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Capital Investment Committee will convene 15 minutes after session in room 10 of the State Office Building. Very exciting. Further announcements? Announcements? Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 9 a.m. Wednesday, April 27, 2016. Representative Pepin moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 9 o'clock a.m. on Wednesday, April 27, 2016. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails. Representative Pepin. I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Pepin moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The motion prevails and the House stands adjourned until 9 o'clock a.m. Wednesday, April 27, 2016.